as of now, she is the only card in the One Piece card game that draws you offensively and defensively. Yo, -sha. what is up, Joe Crew? It is me, Joku DMD, and today I got a Don Quixote do Framingo deck profile. This is my custom Don Quixote leader that I made. You may have seen it on my YouTube shorts. If not, you're seeing it now. Before I get into this deck profile, I gotta shout out Moon Men TCG. Max, thank you for sharing this deck profile with me. If you guys haven't checked out Moon Men TCG already, you absolutely should because this is basically verbatim his deck. I don't think I really changed much of anything in this. I really, really like it. I think it's a great list. I think it can hang in the meta. So it's fun to play blue and uh, it's fun to be me and it's fun to be you. Let's check out this deck profile. So this is Don Quixote do Framingo. Uh, this guy, Don X2, when attacking, you could pay one and play a warlords cost four or less in rest mode so you're basically playing a four or less a, you're basically playing a four cost for three kind of and it's rested so they can swing into it but you're also getting a 7k swing out of that so this dude's like swinging for seven and playing stuff you can just you can get a lot of value out of him he's a very very value generating leader um, and i like him a lot so let's get into this deck profile so lots of basic stuff here. Perona is a one cost. You pay one, you get to search top five and rearrange your top five cards in whatever order you want. So you can set up your plays off Don, off Do Flamingo, right? So if you pay play Perona, you can stack your four cost on top. And if you can see far out enough in the future and use your observation hockey, you can really uh, get things sorted and organized so you can really gain value over the course of your turns if you can kind of predict where your turns are going to go in your draws. So Perona is really, really good. She also has counter power and she can swing into searchers because she's a 2k. It'll make them waste a 2k. So she's good. Dofi does the same thing. This is the Dofi alt art. I think his art's actually pretty cool, but um, he's a 1k counter and then he's a blocker. So you play him for three and then he does the same thing as Perona where he rearranges top five cards and then you can organize and set up your plays, set up the stuff off your leader. Um, really, really good card. Good to have a blocker. Um, great, great card. And then we got Law. This is your one cost blocker. He's great. Just play one and block. Every, every deck should be running their color of this card. It's free negates basically alvita really for the 2k counter power you don't really want to discard to have to bounce stuff there's better ways to bounce things in this deck but she is a 2k and you need blue 2ks so play four of her this dude's really interesting kuma is like when you when he dies you can play a pacifista but you have to have it in your hand but it kind of like forces your opponent to make a weird decision, right? And anytime you can force your opponent to make a weird decision, you might be making them make the wrong decision because they don't know what's in your hand and they don't know what's going on on your side of things, right? So if you play him off your leader, he's in rest mode and they're like, ah, I want to remove this guy. He's a blocker and he can attack, which gives you options, right? You can either attack with him or you can block with him, which is really good. And if they kill him, then you get to play the pacifista. But you may not have the pacifista in hand, but you may have the pacifista in hand. And if you do have the pacifista in hand, that means they're making a 6K come out. So they're going to remove your 5K and then they're going to give you a 6K. And if they do it on their turn when they swing into it, he's not going to have summoning sickness on their turn. So you get to swing with him, but it's always just a threat. And I think three is fine for the threat because more often than not, people just aren't going to swing into him. He's just kind of annoying to deal with. Gecko Moria is good. You play four and you can grab a Warlord cost four or less from your drop area or your trash. Um, so you can get your Law Blockers back. You can get your Dofi Blockers back. You can get your Boa Hancocks back. You can get your uh, Mihawks back. You can get your Kumas back. There's just so much that you can grab with him. He's so valuable in the deck to recoup your value. Oh, by the way, sorry about the noise. I'm getting my pirate ship worked on. So you might hear some banging and people screaming downstairs, but that's just part of Frankie working on the ship. Um, yeah, so Gecko Moria, really, really good. Mihawk, also really good. He is a 2k counter and he also has some value. You can play him, swing with him, and when he has a Dawn on him, he's going to be swinging for six and you get to draw two cards and discard two cards. So you get to cycle your hand, which is really, really nice. And it's not, you don't have to trash before you draw. So you get the options of, hey, I just drew two things I don't want. I'll just get rid of these, right? Or you can, you know, just set a lot of stuff up. He's really, really good. This Gecko Moria I like also when you have five or more cards in hand, he gets double attack, which means he'll hit two life off simultaneously. But you have to remember if they're just at one life, it's not going to hit the one life and then hit them for their last life. This will just hit two life cards into their hand. Um, so deals pressure and people are going to want to deal with him because they don't want to have to deal with him taking two life cards. 
Uh, Teach is really good. I like Teachy a lot. He can just bounce cards back to your hand or their hand when you play him. So four cost and he bounces a three cost back to hand. So if you have like, a, I don't know, a Perona on board and you need to restack your top five, you can play Teach, grab Perona, play Perona, set up, and then do your leader effect. If you're late game, I mean, I don't know if you're necessarily going to do that, but you can also just bounce their blockers. If you have a board set up, you play Teach, bounce one of their blockers, and then just kill them. Bo Hankook, MVP of the deck. God, I love Boa. And I love both arts, so I'm playing two of each. I do have four of the alt arts, but I actually am just, I really like both of these arts a lot. Um, and it feels good to have variety in the deck. So she is, when you have five or less cards in hand, um, and she has a dawn on her, when she swings or attacks, you draw. Drawing is good. Drawing in card games is really, really good. Drawing in life is good. If you're an artist and you enjoy drawing, or if you're not an artist and you want to start drawing, you should do it because in card games and in life, drawing is great. And Boa does a lot of drawing. She can do it offensively and defensively. As of now, she is the only card in the One Piece card game that draws you offensively and defensively. That's important to know. That's a good thing. That's really strong. So people are going to want to play around her. They're going to want to remove her and you're forcing them to use investments and you can play her basically for three dawn, right? Because you put two on your leader, swing, tap one, player in rest mode if you can set that up or she's great to just pay four for and put a dawn on her and then when they're swinging you just block with her counter with her and then you have all your other blockers and you keep blocking to keep her alive so you can draw off of her when you take an attack and you can draw off of her when you uh make an attack so really 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 good card and she's beautiful uh virgo three virgo this is for kid this is for dealing with kid you gotta prepare to deal with captain kid so if you are playing against green and you see virgo you want to play virgo because you're going to need to swing into that big kid and you're going to need bodies set up to deal with that so he will get rested by okiku but you can hopefully bounce okiku or remove her so they won't be able to play her and then you set up virgo and then you're going to be able to swing into their big kid and then Dofi, of course, if anybody is silly enough to play a big card that they can bounce, you just bounce it and then you have a 7k body on board. He bounces a 7 or less on play. Really, really strong cards from the starter deck. And then Mihawk basically does the same thing, but he's a much bigger body. So you pay 9, bounce a 7 uh, to the... Oh, he actually goes to the bottom of the deck. That's even better. So Mihawk bottom deck stuff. I didn't even realize that. I thought he bounced it. Yeah, so Mihawk, you pay, pay 9, bottom deck something, and then you swing for 9k the next turn. Very, very strong. And the last card in the deck is the counter, uh, Love Love Beam, Love Love Mellow. What's interesting about blue is you kind of are want to use your cards, which is cool because you want to keep your hand size lower so you get to draw cards off the cards that allow you to draw cards. Unless you're trying to swing with Gecko Moria, then you need five or more cards in hand. But Love Love Mellow is great because if they swing into like your Hancock, you can put a 2K on it and then you pay two Love Love Mellow and you get to draw a card. So you're refilling your hand, you're protecting your cards, really, really good amount of defense, plus two, plus 4K, is just really strong. So I've been really enjoying this deck. I hope you guys enjoy this deck. Try it out. Sorry about all the banging and the noises. Hopefully my pirate ship work will be done soon. And I won't have these disruptions during my YouTube shrippums and videos. I am a dentist. I can't end without doing a dental tooth tip. My dental tooth tip to you would be your mouth is a really personal space. You know, it's a really private area. It kind of sucks to have people invading it. Going to the dentist can really suck. So find one that you're comfortable with that doesn't like treat you like dungus and will like take their time to explain what's going on and ask questions and learn, get educated. That's what you're paying for so that you can take great care of your teeth thank you so much and i'll see you guys next time